After more than two years on the job, Hannah Scandera still boasts the title Secretary Designate of the New Mexico Public Education Department. The state Senate needs to hold a confirmation hearing to officially put her on the job, but they've steadfastly refused until last week. Now here to answer the simple question of why, former state Senator Dee Dee Feldman returns to the line this week. Former State Representative Dan Foley is back as well from UNM Center for the Study of Voting, Elections, and Democracy, Professor Lana Atkinson. They're above things like fist pumping. That's okay. <laughs> and Principal of the Garrity Group PR, Tom Garrity. He's the owner. He's the man. Now, Didi, let's begin with you in that question of why this woman can't seem to get something out of Senate Rules Committee for a lot of time running now. What's the holdup here? What's well, she's a flashpoint. Mm -hmm. She's a flashpoint that clearly divides um, not only the um, education community, but uh, the two different parties. Let's talk about the education community right off the bat. We had hearings on Friday and Saturday past. Saturday was a real barn burner, but 100 folks testified, many of them education folks not in favor of Ms. Scandera. Yes. Did you, did you sense a theme out of it? What I heard was they're, they're not crazy about her qualifications. I've never well, had taught in the classroom. It's a constitutional item. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Secretary of Education must have an educate, must be an educator. Right. And uh, Hannah Scandera has not taught in the classroom. If she went in to, uh, to try to become a teacher in an mm -hmm. elementary school or to try to become a principal, she wouldn't qualify. Mm -hmm. So I think that that has uh, a lot of the educators irritated. Mm -hmm. The fact that she's out of state is also a flashpoint. Um, but remember, uh, this is a secretary designate who has um, really um, sort of clamped down on teachers and also um, overridden the uh, decision of the uh, Public Education Commission, mm -hmm. the only elected statewide education uh, body that we have. And that did not go down well. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff there. And then, Dan, let me swing to you on this. Sports analogy. Do you have to have played football to be a good football coach? No. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm no, getting I, at here? I hear you. I, I hear you. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's a couple things. First of all, you know, it's interesting. We're 18th in spending in education. We're 49th in outcomes. So we want the people that are getting us to 49th to make the decision. I, I think the, the news bulletin needs to be for the senators. And, and, Gene, you know I've advocated this when Richardson was governor. The election is over and elections have consequences. She has the right to appoint the people she wants to serve in the position she wants. They ought to vote on it, vote it up or down, do what needs to be done. This is, an this is one of the worst examples of partisanship, I think, that's happening in the legislature and why good people don't want to serve. What did, you, what did you make of Saturday in the addition of Michael Corwin, who has been a nemesis of this administration, if not a whole lot more people? Was well, that kosher I, you know, I think him, I'm no, ask I, you guys I think this too. I think it was yeah. wrong. I think him showing up and saying that I'm a parent, that's why I'm here, is like Carl Rove showing up and saying I'm an unpaid concerned citizen advocate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Michael Corwin is a Democrat, activist. He runs a Democrat hack job website that goes after Republicans and has torn this administration apart. He gets 20 minutes to spew his hate, makes some great claims against the administration, and then no one's allowed to ask him a question. I just think it shows the lack of respect for this governor. It shows the lack of respect for the people that she's appointing. Mm -hmm. And I think it highlights why it's difficult for this governor and this administration to work with certain people in the Senate and in the House, because there's this lack of respect. The election's over. She won. I advocated when I was in the the legislature. Mm -hmm. When Governor Richardson won the election, he has the right to appoint his people. Hannah Scandera has a lengthy resume in the education system, mm -hmm. has a lengthy resume working with education. By any bar except the unions, she's qualified to be the Secretary of Education. And so at the end of the day, this is really just a partisan ploy. And I, I don't know why they did it, because I think it's hurting the mm -hmm. Democrats across New Mexico. Interesting. Speaking of Democrats, Lana Atkinson, good to see you again. Always great when you're here. Huh, I yes. I think about that one. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, six Democrats, four Republicans on Senate rules. And Dan mentions the politics mm -hmm. at play here. Pretty good place to bottle this up if you wanted to. It's the perfect count, head count, if you wanted to do this. But the question, again, is why do this? As a matter of fact, why not have that up and down vote at this point? Well, because there's a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. about how it's going to come out. And there's a lot of people pushing different, different constituencies out there, wanting different things. The Democrats are in sure. charge. They want to... They want to slow things down, possibly stop things. And there is an institutional integrity here. So I don't know if I agree with Dan's point that, well, you, you know, you get elected, you get to appoint whatever, whoever, because then why have an institution that has to confirm or deny? Because I think it's, to answer your question, I think it's, if it says that you have to be a New Mexico resident and a lawyer, 
and I want to appoint a Texas resident as an accountant, it's the Senate's job to say no. It's not the Senate's job to say, if I appoint a New Mexico mm -hmm. resident that's a lawyer, to, for them to say, I don't like your politics, I don't like your philosophy, I don't like the way you believe. That's the so, election well, process. Well, well, time out, time out on that. I'm going to get Tom in here as well. That, I would <coughs> say, Tom Garrity, is the point of a confirmation hearing, is it not? You've you, you got to get all this stuff out, fairly or not, factual or not, it seems, uh, for some people's point of view. But is this an okay system for you? Meaning, if we get to a vote early next week or possibly this weekend as we tape this, all sale of after that, no big deal, just part of the process, or has some damage been caused in the, in the interim? Well, you know, we're, damage is a relative thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, in essence, what we're talking about is the, the future of uh, children who are in, in the mm -hmm. K 12 system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see that there are a lot of flaws, um, you know, to both uh, Senator Feldman and uh, Representative Foley's points. I, I think I agree with them in some points, and I disagree, and here's where I disagree. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Secretary Designate Scandera is not applying for an elementary school position. She's applying for and has received a job, just needs confirmation for the you know, head of the uh, K-12 education. Mm -hmm. And to the point, uh, to uh, Dan's point is, is that she is actually, uh, or rather uh, uh, Senator Sanchez is the one who won the election. So to the winner go the spoils. And so, you know, he has his thing, you know, the governor has hers. Sure. Um, but when you Sounds get into like education, a yeah, a little, power, little right? balance of power. Sure. I think, personally, I think it's getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, right. let's, uh, you know, let's move on, we'll move past this. Everybody's made their statement. She's sure. a non-traditional educator, and I think there's a lot of value in bringing non-traditional educators, right. uh, you know, to the to the table and see what can happen. I mean, we can't drop any any lower. Let me ask you this, though, Tom. This idea of educators having angst, agita with this this woman. Mm -hmm. is, is it a fact that it just, it, it just seems like something's perhaps gotten too politicized? Perhaps it's not really about the classroom thing. Is it, it, are, they, are, are teachers in the union joining in a political fight here versus an educational fight in your view? Do we have a little percentage flip-flop here? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, she, her opposition mm -hmm. uh, is very well stated. You know, it's a uh, teacher's- Some harsh words yeah. on Saturday. Oh, it absolutely. Some, and, yeah. you know, and what really bothers me is, is that people are, you know, making a separate political statement at the expense of somebody else. Right, would you agree with that, Dan? Yeah, I, okay. I don't think it's a teacher problem. I think it's a union problem. I think she has a problem with the unions. Mm -hmm. The unions rank and file is against her. There's many teachers that went up there and spoke, mm -hmm. superintendents that went up and spoke in her favor, mm -hmm. that say they think she's, they don't agree with everything she's doing, Mm -hmm. but they like the way she's shaking things up, sure. things well, that she's doing. let's look at why the unions are opposed to her. Uh, earlier uh, last year, she went and assigned a staff member to get the emails, the private emails mm -hmm. of uh, non-union members and union members in order to uh, send political messages. And let me, let me stop you right there because that's the one I get the feedback on from teachers that broke the trust. That move right there is the one move where teachers felt like they were not being covered their backs by their superintendent. Well. And that their, their jobs were up for grabs well, depending and, if they were union members or and, not. And it's questionable whether that was legal. And mm -hmm. I think having been on the uh, Senate Rules Committee for eight years right. and looked at many different nominees, I think that it's the job of the senators to find out whether the conduct of these uh, prospective secretaries not only is constitutional, whether they have the qualifications according to the Constitution, but whether they've broken the law. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, if you look mm -hmm. at uh, the article that was recently written by the Santa Fe Reporter about her travels at the expense of contractors mm -hmm. with the state um, who have uh, gotten contracts, um, there may be a violation there. There may be a violation of our one pay to play uh, mm -hmm. rule, uh, law that we passed. Does that mean, and we're gonna wrap up the segment, unfortunately, I'm gonna stay with you. Does that mean it is a do not pass out of this committee, in your view? Or everything you vote. just talked about. Is, never is this, gonna vote. Never gonna vote? You think they're never gonna vote? Really? This was done, this was done to embarrass Secretary Scandera and Governor Martinez. It's interesting that Senator Feldman talks about all these things with Secretary Scandera, but we can go through the last administration that appointed people to positions that got confirmed by the Senate that didn't even fit the qualifications. They lived in California, they yes. weren't New Mexico voters. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden we've got this fine tooth comb. And I, I think it's exactly why people are tired of partisan politics. No, no, I think the senators have a right to probe conflict of interest. They have a right to probe whether there's been a violation of the gift ban, mm -hmm. a violation of the uh, pay to play uh, but statute. But you can't be half pregnant. You either do it all the time but or you don't he, do but it. There is, but he has, uh, or she should have the opportunity to respond to that. That's true. That's as a good well. point. Well, and we'll end it there. That's that. actually <laughs> a good point. And, and uh, the 
the committee chair is obligated to do that. You were there for a long time, too, and we'll mm -hmm. see what happens there. In a moment, a look at the ever-changing landscape of campaign finance here in New Mexico.